Geeks, nerds, Jedi kin, why don't we know what the most famous weapon in all of science fiction is? A lightsaber is neither made of light nor saber shaped. I think science can help figure this out. The secret to what a lightsaber is really made of is in their color. When we ask what a lightsaber is, we mean the blade, not all the sci-fi nonsense crammed into the hilt. And if we want to know what the blade really is, first we have to know what it isn't. You're looking at Exhibit A right now, glowing blades that can impact other objects. If a lightsaber is glowing, that means you can see it. Duh, which implies that lightsabers are not lasers. This is what a laser-based lightsaber would look like. Yeah, pretty lame. That's because laser light is coherent light, meaning that all of the light waves are in phase and more or less identical to each other, meaning that that light also doesn't have a chance to diffuse and spread out and meet your eyes. And I can prove this to you. Here is a green laser pointer powerful enough to hurt your eyes. Now, are you watching? It's on. Yeah, pretty lame. Even if this laser was super high powered, you still wouldn't get a lightsaber's telltale glow and hum. At least, not like this. Oh yeah. If a lightsaber isn't a laser sword, George Lucas. Laser sword, laser sword. Hmm, then it probably isn't a light-based weapon at all for the simple reason that to impact other objects and to transfer heat, a lightsaber blade needs to have some mass, which light doesn't provide. That heat could be coming from infrared light, but again, an infrared light-based lightsaber would be invisible. So a non-light or non-laser light weapon that still looks like a lightsaber really only leaves one option that can explain everything from lightsaber luminosity to lightsaber color. And no nerds, it has nothing to do with kyber crystals. No matter what Disney is saying right now, what was that thing was? A lightsaber needs to be hot, it needs to glow, and it needs the ability to take on different colors. Kind of like the plasma inside of a neon sign. No exactly like the plasma inside of a neon sign. Neon signs create light by running a lot of electricity through a gas. So inside your typical neon sign, you have a glass tube filled with some noble gas like neon, and then an electric current is added. When the electricity runs through the tube, some of the atoms will have their electrons ripped from them, turning them into positively charged ions. When that happens, the ions will start accelerating down towards the negative end of the tube and the electrons up towards the positive end, and those ions will smash into other neon atoms, ripping their electrons from them, and so on and so on as the plasma is formed. During each of these collisions, atoms are gaining and losing electrons, starting off a chain reaction called an electron avalanche. Ooh. And then some of the ions that lost an electron hook back up with electrons and return to their ground state and emit energy in the form of a photon of light. In Neon's case, that light is reddish orange. We've talked about why lightsabers are plasma weapons before. Laser sword, laser sword. Mm. But here's what really proves it. It explains lightsaber colors. Neon emits a reddish light when electricity runs through it simply because that's the wavelength of light its excited atomic structure gives off when returning to its ground state. Therefore, the emission spectrum of neon is more towards the red end of the visible spectrum. If lightsabers are made from plasma, then Jedis and Siths alike could use specific elements to color their lightsabers, just like turning on a neon sign based on their emission spectrums. So, Darth Vader probably has a neon-based lightsaber, which means that Obi-Wan would have a xenon-based lightsaber, Luke could have a lightsaber that was based on mercury vapor, and Mace Windu could have an argon lightsaber. The color of these gases do depend heavily on the pressure inside of the tubes and how much electricity is running through them, but this comparison still proves that lightsabers are plasma. Here's what I'm proposing. When a Jedi turns on a lightsaber, like we've discussed before, a strong magnetic field shoots out in a tight ring encapsulating some air. And then an electric current runs through that magnetic ring, causing an electron avalanche inside of the air, turning it into a plasma, while a small bit of gas like neon is injected into that air to give it its distinctive glow. And then the center of the blade could be millions of degrees, while the outside of the blade could be cold enough to give it that glow, just like it is 
happening right now. You're seeing it in this experimental fusion reactor called a tokamak, which is real science. So what are lightsaber blades really made from? Plasma. Laser sword. Laser sword. Mm. Laser sword. Plasma has the mass to transfer hand cutting heat. It can glow distinctive Jedi and Sith colors. And most importantly, we have the gas to do this here on Earth, like Argon and Xenon. Even though Star Wars takes place in a galaxy far, far away, we're all still in the same universe. Also, in light of our findings, I'm proposing that we drop the misnomer lightsaber for something more accurate, like Plasmatana! Because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter to suggest episode ideas and on Instagram where I'm now posting mini episodes like one that just went up today. At rot underscore farm asks, in zero gravity, could you flip a hot pizza in the box without the toppings coming off? Yes, because in space, there is no down or up. But if you were in the vacuum of space with a hot piece of pizza, because there's no air surrounding it, it wouldn't be able to radiate its heat very well, meaning that you'd have a, a hot slice that would take a long time of blowing. We've done six episodes about how lightsabers work now, and there's still one problem. Even though we can create the look of a lightsaber and the heat of a lightsaber and how it's contained in this tight ring by magnetic fields and uses plasmas of different elements to create its colors, there's still the, the cutting problem. Plasma is made out of just a few grams of gas. And when you don't have a lot of mass, you can't actually transfer a lot of heat by contact. To cut through a blast door with plasma alone, you would need so much plasma, plasma that not even the force could contain in just one sword. So maybe we'll have to go to the seventh episode. <laughs>